A few weeks ago, I did a video about getting a film look on a digital photograph. In this video, I'm going to do the same with video. Collaborating is a world that I started to explore more and more since I did this YouTube channel. As a fictional film director, of course, I observe the grading process of my films and TV episodes, but I never do it myself. With the videos on this channel, it's different. I have to do everything by myself like in the old days when I started out with filmmaking over 30 years ago. A few weeks ago, the company The Hanser approached me and asked if I would be interested in testing out their product. The Hanser is a plugin to color grade digital photos and videos and give them a film-like look. The Hanser provided me with a free license, but did not pay me to do this video. This video is not sponsored, I can say whatever I want. I tested out different video files I shot with different video cameras. I shot with my iPhone 15 Pro Max in Apple Log, I shot with the Panasonic Lumix S52X in V-Log and with my Leica Q3 in L-Log. I will guide you through the installation, setting up the material and the whole grading process. So let me show you the final results first and then guide you step by step through the process of how I got there. I added chapter marks so you can jump to the subject or step that interests you most. Now to the short film. It's about 60 seconds. If you want to skip it here and jump to the next chapter mark, you can do that and you can check it out later. So now let's look at the process of how to achieve that result. I graded in DaVinci Resolve. The plugin I needed was Dehancer Pro for DaVinci Resolve. You find this when you go to the Dehancer website, www.dehancer.com. Then there is a menu point here, Video. And here you have Dehancer Pro. It is available for DaVinci Resolve, Adobe After Effects and Premiere, and for Final Cut Pro. I'm going to show you the DaVinci Resolve version because this is my editing software. First, you have to download and basically get the free trial. I have DaVinci Resolve 17 and later. I have 18 now. I have Mac OS Big Sur and later. I'm on Sonoma and I'm going to download the Pro version, the Pro OFX plugin. Download. Once you downloaded the plugin, you have a folder with four files in it. One is the OFX plugin quick guide, one is the installer, then we have a readme text file, which gives you basic information about what kind of system you need, and you have a setup guide. So of course, I'm going to show you how to set up and use the plugin, so we're only needing the Dehanter plugin right now. You double click this, I know where it's coming from, that's why I allow to open, continue, of course I accept everything. So now it is installed. I got a license from Dehancer, so I have to activate this license first before I can use it in DaVinci Resolve. So I have here my user profile. I have the OFX plugin for DaVinci Resolve. And so I copy the key here. I open now DaVinci Resolve 18.6 I'm using right now. And if everything went well, the plugin now should be already installed. I have this project now. I go to the little movie I made, which is not yet graded. Then I move to the color page and I have here my first shot. I've already set up my basic 
notes. I have this just basic correction notes. I do exposure contrast. Sometimes I need the color wrapper. I do color correction and the saturation. And I already, because I shot on different cameras, have put in a color transform note so I can tell the system after the grade which camera I was using. I did not shoot in RAW. I just shoot in V-Log or L-Log or Apple-Log. Let's check if the Dehancer plugin is installed. We go here to Effect and then we go to library and if I scroll down here I have my Dehancer Pro 7.1.1 and if I now want to apply this I just drag it onto my node tree and boom it is applied to my node tree. Of course now I need to activate my license here to get rid of the watermark. In order to do that I scroll down to the bottom and I have here license info so I press license info and now here I can add my license key I have to enter my registered email address and my license key and now I can activate the plugin and now it is activated it's actually pretty simple and my test plugin I got from Dehancer expires on March 14th. If I want to use this until March 14th on a different workstation, I need to deactivate it here. So if you ever buy the Dehancer plugin version and you activate it on one machine, you can use it on two machines at the same time for one license. But if you have to move from one computer to another, you need to deactivate it first. And also if you ever have a problem with your system and you need to reset up your system, you need to deactivate the plugin first. It's very important because you only can have activated two systems at once. So we close this here. And now the watermark is gone and we can start grading. So maybe we don't start with this shot. Let's start, for example, with this shot. This is more light. I use here the Panasonic Lumix S52X and I already applied my color transfer. I'm using an Apple monitor. That's why I have the 709A as an output. If I now apply the Dehancer plugin, I put it here and drop it and now it, it is applied. The source of course is REC 709 because this is basically what comes out here. It's REC 709. And now because it's set up for the first time before we can add film stocks we need to download the film profiles. There is no profile installed at the moment but when I press this button the download process starts automatically and imports the 62 film presets. So we now have our film presets installed and it is now set on Kodak Vision 3 250 Daylight. The film grain is also on 250 ISO so we can play around with all those different settings. What I also want to touch at this point is that, of course, when using film, you use a negative film when you shoot the film and you use a positive film when you print the film. Both film stocks have an impact on how your final results look if you use regular film. And this also the Dehancer plugin simulates. Here with the first film, we have the film stock we are shooting at. So we can choose whatever film stock we want and then we also need to choose a print stock. So what I would recommend using as a print stock is the Kodak 2383 print film, which is basically the regular go-to film if you go and see a movie in a movie theater. So we press it and you could see that it changed the contrast. I can start playing around with the different film stocks. For this shot, I choose the Fuji Color 100. It's a little bit nostalgic thing for me because the Fuji Color 100 was the film stock we used on my first feature film in 1998 when we shot that. And yeah, so I'm gonna start with that. And now we can 
manipulate some of the categories here. Of course, I can now change the grain profile. So let's say you want to go more like 35 millimeter, 500 grain. It's going to be a little bit stronger. If you go 16 millimeter and we go 16 millimeter, 500, it's going to be even more grain. So I think for my shot here, I'm going to go with the 250. Now I can also add and remove amount. So I can add and I can remove. I'm not going to go too crazy on this because I already think it looks pretty good. Let me also mention that with all the Lumix shots in this little film, I had a black promised filter attached. So the glow around the lights, that's a natural glow that comes from the filter. It's not something I did in post. With the shot with my iPhone and the Leica Q3 shots, I had no filter on that. So we can manipulate the, the light glow around the light sources. Here, for example, we have Bloom. I could now activate this and it gets even more bloomy. So maybe we do that. And also, we can turn that up or down. Yeah, I think this is really something I, I really like. Also, a nostalgic thing because at the time when we shot my film, we mostly used um, the night shots, also a Black Promise. And still, we add a little bit of Bloom. We can add film damage. I wouldn't do that. We, of course, can play around with a vignette. Of course, need to enable that first, which I'm not going to do. So in Dehancer, you can do basic color correction as well. I can turn on the exposure settings. So we have the overall exposure. I can manipulate the temperature. I can manipulate the tint which of course, if you go a little bit more green, it looks even more like film, but like old film. <laughs> I can defringe it and I can change the defringe radius. And then you can also manipulate the film developer tool. You need to enable it first and then you can boost the contrast. Or if you want to bring up the darker spots, you can go down with the contrast. I actually like the contrast, so I'm not going to manipulate that. You can work on your gamma correction, which doesn't have a great impact. You can manipulate the color separation and you can boost your saturation or take it down a little bit more. But I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to disable that. If I want to do basic corrections, I'm going to do this here. And for example, I would like to manipulate a little bit the contrast. So I go to the contrast curve here with a little bit more black and I want to push the highlights a little bit more okay, here. Maybe like this, it's maybe a little bit more extreme, but I actually like that a lot. Wet down would be great for this shot, but <laughs> unfortunately it was not raining. Yeah, so this is what we can do with this first shot and I want to touch on this shot. This is shot with the Leica Q3 because I was walking through that tunnel following that uh, person with the backpack. So if I add the hands here and I'm also going to go with the Fuji color 100 and I need to put the print profile also with the codex so it looks like this. This is now a very monochrome look and of course the darks on the side here are very dark and I'm going to bring those up a little bit, but I'm going to do that as well as color correction first. So bring up the darker parts a little bit here. And I also think this now is a little bit too monochrome. I'm going to go into the dehancer node and here I'm going to push a little bit the in the film developer, I'm going to push the colors. So now we have the yellow here. Going to go a little bit more into the cold area here. So we have just a little bit. So and now I want to, of course, that it matches to this shot, which now is overexposed because I had fixed settings on my camera. And when I came out of this tunnel, it was a little bit too overexposed. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm also going to drag the dehancer plugin first. 
I'm gonna do my basic settings here. I'm gonna go again on to the Fujifilm 100 and I'm gonna go to the Kodak print profile. So now I'm gonna take down the exposure which I'm doing here. So I'm checking with this. Mm -hmm. And now I need to be a little bit warmer here. Maybe I need to decrease the exposure again. We are also doing it with contrast a little bit. Yeah, so for a simple manipulation, it's okay. If you by now are interested in trying out the Hansen Pro yourself, it's also available for Final Cut Pro as well as After Effects and Adobe Premiere. There is a two-week free trial available. If after that you are ready to buy your own license, please use the code STAYCURIOUS to get 10% off. And in this case, I will get a small commission. And now here we have the iPhone material. We'll do absolutely the same. I'm gonna go with the Fuji 100 and the Kodak print. I'm gonna go a little bit warmer. Oh, that looks so good. Isn't that fantastic? Shot on an iPhone. Unbelievable. If you now play a little bit around with the amount of film grain in this shot, here I'm going to increase it a little bit. I mean, I really think this is unbelievable that this is possible on an iPhone. But what happens if we do the exposure here? Mm -hmm. So if I'm copying this now and I'm doing it on the other iPhone shot, it should fit perfectly. Maybe this should be a little bit brighter, but I'm gonna increase the exposure here before the answer. And here I think I'm gonna go down with the grain a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So here we have another Leica shot. So we go and copy the last Leica settings them here. I played around with the insurrection mode of my gimbal. That looks good. Maybe let me check a little bit here the film developer. If I take down a little bit the contrast and give it a little color boost and then maybe take the exposure down here and give it a little bit more contrast here. Yeah, fantastic. So let's copy this and put it over this shot. This I did in Los Angeles a few weeks ago, also with a Black Promise attached. This I would say I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit because I have stuff left and then we can see the film grain in the darker parts and this looks so crazy. <laughs> Maybe let's play around with the color correction and we go totally Fincher on, on this film. And then we would go to the dehancer and maybe desaturate it a little bit. Isn't that crazy? It's more like Nightcrawler, I guess. I mean, I'm definitely not a professional grader, but I think what you can do is so fantastic and it's so much fun. So copy that to this, copy that to this. This will be a little bit too bright. So I'm going to take that down a little bit. Maybe even here. And I know there are, there are some spots that are clipping, especially in the highlights, but I like that. It gives this, it's this in, imperfection, which makes it really alive. And now the, I would say, diff, most difficult shot is this one because this is really underexposed. But then again, we apply our film presets. And then here, I would say, we just push the exposure and then we're going to give it a little bit less contrast, maybe. Bring up the highlights. Oops. 
too crazy. And of course, we here we have not only the fake film grain, we also have the color grain from the underexposed shots. So we're going to turn down the film grain here a little bit, the amount. Maybe I'm going to change this here to an ISO 50 and we turn it down a little bit. And of course, we have to look at the beginning as well. This and apply it here. We also need to just push it a little bit. Play a little bit around with the contrast here. Push that a little bit. Here, I would say, I even think it can be a little bit more grainy. So we add a little bit more grain. That's too much. Something like this. Yeah, and we apply this exactly to the first shot as well. And then this comes out of the out of focus part. And here we can even push the exposure a bit more. Because it's out of focus, we can also give it a little bit more bloom. Yeah, we have this reflection. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, perfect. And this is basically it. I can highly recommend the Dehancer. Not only if you like to give your videos a film look, there's something very unique and somehow very warm you can achieve with the Dehancer, even though if you only use it for small corrections or let's say manipulations to kill the perfect video picture and give it more character. Especially in night shots, I like to play around with glow. It's much easier to achieve an organic filter-like effect than with the Resolve implemented filters. So let me remind you of the possibility of getting 10% off your Dehancer license when using the code STAY CURIOUS. Let me also mention the iOS app from Dehance. It's a separate app that has the same functionality as the desktop version. It works absolutely independently and doesn't need another app on your iPhone. You can optimize videos you take with your regular iPhone app and give them a unique film-like look. When using the Dehancer iOS app, in my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense to shoot in Apple Log. So if you shoot in Apple Log, I highly recommend using DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro or Adobe After Effects or Premiere for the grading process. If you're interested how Dehancer works out of Lightroom for photos, check out this video next. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, X or TikTok for additional information about my channel or my work. Stay curious!